This is Jeremiah 4 and verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Kal halal ehau v'ashem, yehau v'ashai v'ashem, or kwa kudash. Double honors, the apostle and elders of great millstone where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations, their brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson carrying on with this theme here, just exposing this man and our folks who are up with them. I won't accept my inheritance unless my Edomite abuser can share it. It's a preposterous situation to find yourself in. Hard to believe it, but that's where the majority of our folks already refer to what's called the house Negro. I'm sure people understand what that is by now. You have a field Negro and a and house Negro. Those out in the midday sun, they're working 18, 20, 22 hours in the sun when they want to revolt, to form some kind of mutiny. The first obstacle is the house Negro. He's up in the master's house. He doesn't know, he's not prepared to forego all of his privileges that he's getting. He's up in the house, that's where he lives, his family lives there. His children don't get raped by the master. He gets all the crumbs from the master's table. So he's prepared to fight tooth and nail to defend his master. And that is exactly what this uh, lesson speaks to. You get speaking to people, they don't want to look at the big picture. They're just so uh, focused on this man. What about him? What about him? Yeah, but what about you? Let's get, uh, I think we wanted to get Hosea. Where is that? Hosea next, I think. A lot of markers here. Four and six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. See, two thirds, two out of every three Hebrew Israelites, they have been rejected by the Most High. And it's a, it's a terrible place to find yourself. We pray morning, noon, and night that the Most High don't take his spirit away from us. We don't want to be in that number rejected. We want to repent our power, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son, is Yahweh Shai. It means savior, redeemer. He's our deliverer. He's our high priest and intercessor on our behalf. Our who? We are the true children of Israel. They've given us bywords, trying to hide who we are. In Psalms 83, he gives a long list of all these countries that form this confederacy to block them, to hide who the true children of Israel are, giving us these bywords, Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. We spread to the four corners of the earth. We look like the other nations of where we've dwelled. And we also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. The laws that are in this book long it was only given to the children of Israel. The other people, the other 17 nations, there's a total of 18. It's got nothing to do with them. All of our judgment is in this book, whether you like it or not. Uh, Exodus 17, let's go from 13. And Joshua discomfited Amalek. This is the chief house of these Edomites calling himself the white man. There's no such thing in the scriptures. We have to keep using these colors, but your color is not your nationality. I'm going to keep saying it over and over and over until this gets through. Maybe there's someone out there who just can't get it. Maybe this might help Joshua, this comforted Amalek, the chief house, the chief tribe, if you like, of the Edomites, the so-called white man and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, 
because important. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek. Those are the people currently inhabiting our land over there in Israel, saying that they are us, the biggest identity theft crime ever from under heaven. He's going to get rid of them. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. It's going to be on and on and on until he wipes them out and it's getting ready to happen now. Let's get some of, more of what this man is like in uh, Maccabees. Let's get some here. Maccabees 1. Maccabees 1. I'm going to bounce around here. Let's get verse 9 after his death. Speaking about... Uh, What's his name? Alexander the Great, and I want to read all of it. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons, and after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. Let's jump to 11. In those days when there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So this is the easy life that much of our folk want to enjoy. They don't want all of this hardship and to hear about all of what we, what is in the book. They've jumped out. They've got all these agreements, whether it's uh, 501c3 or whatever country you're in. You can set up these uh, mental institutions called churches wherever you like there's nothing preventing you you get all these tax breaks and everything let's see what they're going to do when this karagma comes and they need it to buy and sell it's going to be really interesting verse 56 here first maccabees and when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found they burnt them with fire this is the bible we're speaking of and these are the edomites who's doing this this is the greek captivity it's all happened before and they're doing it again verse 57 and wheresoever was found with any of the book of the testament the bible or if any consented to the law the king's commandment was that they should put him to death we're coming back around to that point at which time this is verse 60 according to the commandment they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised we're reading this because our folk are joining themselves unto these people not recognizing or accepting their own identity and who this man is this is the same man the edomite that you're so concerned about his welfare this is a consistent theme throughout the scriptures. Try to understand who it is you're asking about and fighting about and worried over his welfare. There's never any question about any of the other nations. Oh, but what about this white man? Can he be saved? I don't want to accept my, what's all this? I'm royal blood and this... Uh, Hebrew Israelite stuff. I don't want to hear it. I just just leave me alone. I'm happy with this man. I've got him up in my church. I've got his pictures up. Let me be. Where we're gonna get a few more of these. Let's go from sixty. At which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised. And they hanged the infants about their necks and rifled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. Why are you so angry? Because we're following our own laws, statutes and commandments. You love when we stick with your degeneracy, all of your gangs and your thugs that you've set up. The drugs that you've put in our community, all the guns and to infiltrate, to cause all this madness and debauchery that is taking place. You're happy when we're doing that, but now we're not doing it. I'm going to read that scripture service and no longer stay on what you've got to offer. So this is the spirit that is in this man you're so worried about that you can't even focus on your inheritance. Oh, yeah, but what about this man? I can't accept my inheritance without him. 
howbeit many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. Wherefore, they chose rather to die that they might not be defiled with meats and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So then they died and there was very great wrath upon Israel. That's what's getting ready to happen. It's coming round again. I was going to go to I think Isaiah. Let's get Isaiah. Let's see if we can get through these. Isaiah 13 and verse 15. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. You should be trying to get away from this man instead of being so concerned about his welfare. There's some more about uh, Amos. Back to Amos. Line by line. Can two walk together except there be agreement between them? That's why you're so concerned about this man. But the judgment is coming. It's coming. Horrific is going to be to the Edomites, this person calling himself the white man since 1681. It's time to repent. We need to repent. Get away. Separate yourself from him. If we look at the first two verses here. In Amos chapter 3, hear this word, that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. It's got nothing to do with anything else, any other nation. They're just being used as uh, like support actors in the Most High's movie. So you, we're bigging them up, putting them in a position that they don't belong. They're just temporarily like the whipping stick, especially the Edomite who's heading up this list of those that envy and hate your prized position, whether you accept it or not. It doesn't change your bloodline. Amos 9. Let's just get these two verses, 9 and 10. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people, as the transgressors of the law, shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. You see, but you've joined onto this man and you're running out of time. Fighting against yourself. Let's just get, uh, normally get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Let's get this one instead. Uh, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee. We just read, you only have I known. He's not interested in the other nations. The Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Not the same as, not to be dragging them along into your inheritance. It's impossible. That's not what's written. The Most High has chosen us, the Hebrew Israelites, currently calling us Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, to be his special people. We didn't do it to ourselves. He is the one who made the election. Uh, we read about that in Ephesians, predetermined, pre-selected, pre-ordained, foreknown by who? By our power, the creator of the heaven and earth. His name is Yahweh. His only begotten son is Yahweh Shai. You don't care about those other names. Those are all demons. Ezekiel 25. Go from 12. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom, the white man, hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended, and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Teman, 
and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people. See, if we are those people who refer to ourselves as the hopeful elect, some of us are going to be used as the instruments of vengeance against the Most High's enemies, because they are also our enemies. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God, Yahweh power. He's getting ready to move on these people. Wisdom of Solomon from the Apocrypha. Let's just get one verse here. 14 and verse 9. For the ungodly and his, and his ungodliness are both alike hateful. To Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. He hates them. Better believe it. You can try to defend Massa all you like with your Stockholm Syndrome. What about him? I don't want to hear about my inheritance without this man's inclusion. Joel 3 and verse 2. I will also gather all nations. This is what's getting ready to happen. And will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat, the place of the Most High's judgment, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Well, who's done all this? And then what follows here is a list of these people's crimes. Can't you see who this is speaking about? You don't accept it? Well, there's something called reincarnation. They like to say there's no such thing because they want to avoid judgment. But it's all over the scriptures. you got some researching to do. Jeremiah 51, let's read 44 and 45. But I and I will punish Bel in Babylon and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he had swallowed up. And the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Modern day Babylon being America. Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon. This is the headquarters of this wretched man, this brute of a man committing all of his wicked deeds in the earth. My people, go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. It's getting ready to happen. The chess pieces are being moved around by the master strategist himself, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's get Isaiah 10 and 20. And it referred to it before. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. In truth, the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty one, the mighty power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We're not staying on this man. We're not looking to this man anymore. We do not care about trying to get validation from this man, all of his various qualifications, his Bible school and all this, unless you've got all these letters after your name, having attended his theologian, uh, whatever they call him. So you have to be validated by him. He said so in such and such book. And you can hear these people, all these long words, unless you can match them in some debate, then you don't count for nothing. Well, it's foolishness. The Most High has a people and he's given his word. He's revealed his secrets. It was close by there in Amos 3. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Not sure if I've, Quoted that right there. Where am I? We're close by here. Isaiah 11 and 11. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Patros, Cush, Elam, and from Shinar, Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. It's getting ready to happen that second time. Well, let's get uh, 26, Isaiah 26 and 
20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, speaking of the chariots, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. This be a, can you just imagine, project your mind, if you happen to be one of those people. That's what we pray for morning, noon, and night. So all these lessons about repent come out of her, my people. Imagine being on this chariot looking down and the indignation, the righteous anger of our power is taking place on the earth, that lake of fire. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. It's all being revealed. We need to stop fighting against ourselves. It's time to wake up. It's high time, high time. Uh, Hebrews 8, let's go from 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. This is exclusive. And with the house of Judah, the southern northern kingdom together, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. You're saying you don't want this? Why wouldn't you want this? Something has gone wrong in the brain for you to be turning your back against this and to only be concerned about everybody else. Top of your list is your abuser, this so-called white man, the Edomite in the scriptures. What on earth has happened to us? 1 Corinthians 15, let's get a few of these. Let's go from 50. Love this. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. You don't want this. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and the this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up, O death. Where is thy sting, O grave? Where is thy victory? This is immortality we're speaking about. You get your mind about the magnitude of what it is you're turning your back on, what it is you're bringing up your arguments. See, the basis of every one of these arguments, I've watched, I've seen a lot of them. Over the years, I don't bother with them anymore. But the basis of what these people are arguing about is to include this oppressor. The mind is gone so that they can't focus on all of these goodies. Immortality is what awaits for the Hebrew Israelite. But two-thirds are so focused on what this man has got to offer that they're fighting against themselves. This is for you and you're saying you don't want it. What about this Edomite calling himself the white man? You've got his pictures up. You're worshipping him. You've fallen for his tricks, his subtle, his uh, beguiling. Let's get the last few here. First John 3 and 2, beloved. Now we are the sons of the Most High. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See? That's what's at stake. Vengeance is coming. Let's finish up with Isaiah 47 and 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. This is Yahweh Shai right here. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. He has for a redeemer. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel. 
that's our power right there coming to take vengeance and execute judgment on all of the inhabitants of the world what's this state you've got yourself in where all you can think of is this man oh, i don't care about my inheritance what's all this you're speaking about what about him you could go on there's more scriptures of course there are but we maybe for another time i won't accept my inheritance unless my edomite abuser the white man can share it shalom until the next one no fear no guy